Assalamu alaikum everybody and hi and welcome to the session titled From Theory to Practice. Now we are a little bit famil familiar with OFDM, OFDM advantages, disadvantages, the theoretical part of OFDM, the mathematical model of OFDM, the key transmission and reception principle, the, the block diagram construction and the, the components used in each part of these block diagrams and the parameters responsible for adjusting and meeting the requirements. So now what's then? What, we are either researchers or engineers at the end of the day. Yes, we read, we learn, we study, but at the end of the day, we need to move from the consumption phase to the production phase with minimum short with minimum time you just get get to know what's of them get to know my more get to know the fundamental aspects but this is consumption this is reading this is understanding we now want to make use of this knowledge by putting that by putting it in into practice or helping us produce something new so if we were to classify ourselves we are either researchers under the capital letter R or engineers under the capital letter E. So researchers are the people who are always interested in producing, inventing, creating, devising new things. So they, they create, they, they propose the idea, they investigate it, and to validate the effectiveness of their ideas, they usually simulate it. Simulate it and they prove it mathematically, math. Math, so si researchers, math and simulations. And if you want to validate your idea more and get it into practice and be close to the industry, sometimes you go and imp implement it practically. We need to learn how. For engineers who are working in the industry, they usually uh, want to make things work. So they also use simulation they rarely use math they don't use too much math because they are not in academia there is no point of using of being forced to use something that that's not easy to make others understand it and live with it and usually they are more concerned with the practical part and they want things to be running in practical uh, environment in realistic uh, in realistic scenario where things are going to be implemented. So under this, whether you are engineer or researcher, you need to have a look at this phase, the transition from theory to practice. The, one who, the ones who can combine theory with the practice are the ones who gonna make, make the best use of their knowledge in reality. So let's now go to the theoretical analysis, OFDM. We know the theoretical part of OFDM, but when we want to improve OFDM or want to have an idea and want to test it or want to prove it. So once you have a new algorithm, you simulate it, you simulate it. And this we call it theoretical analysis. This is including math analysis of your idea, the system model, the performance analysis math in the paper and the simulation part and testing for this. You use MATLAB, you use softwares like MATLAB, like LabVIEW, like Octav, like m many, many, many other softwares. But usually the most famous two ones are MATLAB and LabVIEW. And usually this is for simulation purposes. Now, if you want to move from simulation to implementation, you want to see how your method, how, how your design algorithm works in practice. You need to move to prototyping. Prototyping include hardware implementation using software defined radio or FPGA component. Now, some of you might say prototyping is expensive and equipment device, wireless communication devices are expensive and not, body, not everybody can afford them. But I can tell you that there are many many devices and many components that are not that expensive and you can buy them with with, with small amount of fund and really get your 
get you started in the practical in the world of practical implementation of wireless systems so what do you need here you need a software defined radio this software defined radio basically gives you the rf the rf front end of your transceiver which includes filters oscillator analog to digital converter until you reach the antenna as the antenna so this is the rf the rf is front the rf chain power amplifier and you don't have any you don't have to to worry about this part this part comes with the device you buy we call it software defined radio it's it's device software it, it, it basically you have that device and then you need to program it with a software so you program whatever you have in your uh, baseband any algorithm yet that you design it in the baseband you need at the end of the day to shift it and m make it move to the rf and then to the antenna and transmit it so this at the end of the day you're you you work in the software environment baseband means everything in the baseband you can design it by coding so you by using tools like matlab and lab view and gnu radio gnu radio also is very famous you can implement your algorithm and then push your code to this device software defined radio device device that usually example of these devices usrb I will show you USRB. USRP device, USRB devices, they are very commonly used in the industry to test in wireless communication systems. And here, what, what you need to do is you need to design your system in the base band and uh, encode it, program it. And then there is a connection that lets you connect with the device and then you will see your transmission in real time, real life. So you have hardware in loop, sample streaming project, you have the FPGA which is exactly inside the USRB device and you can you can also learn the process this process of real time implementation of wireless system using available examples in lab view for example you have the LTE application framework and Wi-Fi application framework this includes the step-by-step -step implementation details of the 3GBB documents for implementing a cellular cell like LTE or a cellular uh, a Wi-Fi uh, access point, Wi-Fi uh, uh, base station. So you have also system integration for to, in to integrate your system and test it using the NS3, LTE, these are available, you can get them and they can really help you get started and understand how things work and build the practical LTE system, practical Wi-Fi system from scratch, you are building it using uh, USRB devices and software uh, tools that can control the parameters that can affect your transmission overall and then deployment you move to the end-to-end -end application then the product then testing and then to the market but usually as an engineer you are here as a researcher you are here as the business people companies who are running and this they they are here providers so okay, you can be in any of these parts, but usually we are mainly concerned about these two parts. And also if you want to make an application that really can be used in your town, in your city, in your, you can build your own LTE network or your own Wi-Fi network from the way you build a computer network inside your home or for a certain institution, you can build a cellular wireless network here. We are talking about serious stuff that you can. It was before few few years. It was not even existed. You cannot even think of the possibility of creating a cellular network by your own. Now, with the help of these devices and this, you can create a GSM network. GSM network for your town. You don't need a provider, an operator. GSM network full. 
Well, you need, uh, for example, you can determine how many base station you need and you can create these boxes that work as base stations with, with not very expensive devices, USRB devices. And I will tell you some projects that are running and how to talk to the people and get these devices and mo configure them and deploy them. With, with, with less than, I'm talking about budget of less than ten to $20,000. It's, it's, you build a cellular network, you become a company if you want. Those are for the people who are interested in this field. If you are interested, we can share with you the material that can enable you and the links and the people and where you need to talk and to whom you want to uh, get in touch with so that you get into this domain. But we are, as researcher, we are usually interested here. We want to always create new things, not use the existing things and make creating new things, uh, test them, give them to the world, let them make use of it and improve the, the, the quality of life and people uh, lives and make things better and much easier. So this is we, where we are. Let's go to the how you can do this. So you need a computer for testing simplified block diagram of how you test your of how you build a real of how you implement your algorithms in hardware implementation, how you implement them in practice, how you move from theory and simulation to real-time implementation and real-time prototype. You have a product. So you have your computer running a software that can control the parameters controlling your OFDM or MIMO or whatever, anything in basement. And with the computer, we call it the host. You have the user interface and you have the software MATLAB or LabVIEW or GNU Radio. There is open source and uh, licensed softwares, of course. You can, if you don't have enough money and you don't, you can use this, the open source software like G GNU Radio. If you have money and you want to use extra features and really blocks and this, you can also exp use LabVIEW or some other advanced softwares. And then the, the, these are the... There are many other softwares, of course, but these are the most famous ones. And then you move to the FPGA. You push your signal after you design it in MATLAB or you design your algorithm, you design your transmit waveform. You push it to, Mat to FPGA. What's FPGA? FPGA is this little devi this device here. So we call this device USRB, USRB device, which is Software Defined Radio Device. And it, as you can see, it's very simple. It just has got some ports for the antennas, input and output, and some links for uh, and some cable for the power and cable for to get connected with the computer and to program it. Because this, think of that like an access point, or think of this like Wi-Fi router. You need to program it. So it, but it's you program the FPGA, you program on the level of FPGA, and you monitor it and control it from this. So this is your base station. Think of that. This is your ax. This that can be installed in a tower, and of course with antennas and this. If you want more capabilities and more functionalities, and you have, uh, you need to increase and improve your processing capabilities. You need to use rack USRBs, which is more advanced and more, more complex a little bit. But of course, uh, more useful and uh, at the price, at the increase of its price. So you have the LTE channel in, inside that. You have, the, you can use, you can use LTE application framework or Wi-Fi as a starting template for you. You need a reference. You need a guide. You can, in that, you can find channel encoders, modulators, impairment correction, RF impairment. All these functions are uh, inherent in the FPGA tool. And the, the softwares like LabVIEW, they already have these functions ready for you. You can, within, with these functions, you can implement a link-to-link -link communication system without being dependent on any company, cam, in any firm or company by yourself. If you want to build a streaming video or this without being dependent on certain company, you can just have two USRB devices like this, connect each USRB with the monitor or with the software you want to control. And then uh, just there are examples I can show you where you ne just need to use this example and you build a link, line to uh, link, communication link from transmitter to receiver.
So this is going to be very, very effective and very useful for you if you are interested in building a communication links. And then here, this is the, the, the this, this package, the FPGA, is where you need to improve and where you need to link it with your with your software and mon and control it and adjust this parameter. And here, the, these components, DAC and RF conversion and antenna, they are here, this device. So the device has the RF front capability and the FPGA capability. And the host is uh, the software that's responsible for configuring and the programming all these components together. So now, you let's get a deeper uh, look at this USRB device. It's understanding the system. It's a transmitter and receiver are executed in an FPGA called Kenet, uh, Kentex 7. It's like th this Kentex 7, like the operating system inside the USRB Rio. This is the commercial name of the USRB or the Flex Rio card. This you can buy it for $1,000 or even less. There are even cheaper USRB devices, but as I told you, the higher the price, the better the quality usually, and you can do more functionality with it. But for simple things like LTE application framework, you want to implement a simple LTE E node B, uh, you can use simple stuff. But you know, you cannot use this with the... Sometimes they prevent you, the company, to use this with the commercial base stations. I mean, they don't allow you to, co to make coexistence with it because so that you don't compete with them. So you can make it for testing, for research, for application, to build your own thing, but to make it work with uh, coexisted uh, with the with the existing commercial network, you need to be really uh, solve this issue. They have some license parameters and some other stuff that they don't allow you to implement to manipulate, and that's why they limit you from the commercial deployment. Uh, 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 yeah, yes, the resource, the spectrum. This is very good question. This is very amazing uh, question. Uh, the resource, the spectrum. Y you can, you, you, we all know that the spectrum, that there is license spectrum and unlicensed spectrum. What's the license spectrum? License spectrum, this is a spectrum you need to buy from the government. You need to be licensed to operate over it because if you operate on a different spectrum, you will interfere with the people and you will create so many problems and people will sue you and you will be fined and they will come and jail you. But here is the fact. You can use this at unlicensed spectrum. What's this unlicensed spectrum? 2.4 is unlicensed spectrum. Anybody can use it, which is the Wi-Fi spectrum. 2.4 gigahertz is unlicensed. 5 gigahertz is unlicensed. 60 gigahertz is unlicensed spectrum. And all of them for free. Visible light communication is unlicensed spectrum. This is one solution, one solution. The other solution, if you want to use a frequency like, let's say, 700 megahertz, and this is licensed, you have to buy it to avoid buying it and to use it. For example, in the lab, in the communication lab, in our lab, in our school, we, I, I use these, uh, sometimes I use these frequencies inside the lab. But how, what, what do I do? I just reduce the power in such a way that the power does not, re, does not exceed certain room or certain environment or certain building. I mean, I, I must reduce the power so that it does not interfere with the network globally over the, over the country. So this is one uh, one key important uh, question, and of course there are there is also TV white space spectrum that you can use for around 400 megahertz. The but be careful if you want to go to commercial deployment and you want to build the network that can cover uh, serve user located in different ranges in different places and in a city or a big country, you really need to like to get approval and license. Otherwise you will interfere with others and this is illegal. So this is, but for you, for testing bare this is this is cognitive radio. Yes, this is basically cognitive radio. This device enables you to sense the spectrum and see whether it's uh, 
whether it's empty or not empty and use it but also cognitive radio is regularized and you you need to uh, for this case this is very important question cognitive radio cognitive radio is very 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 huge massive huge massive research area and so many so many research available there and there there are products there are devices usrb devices that before they use the spectrum they they test they sense the spectrum and see is the spectrum now used by the operators is it used by the by the current uh, users by the primary user if it's not used then you can transmit over this frequency you will not interfere with them but even when you use cognitive cognitive radio you need to get like you need to agree with the company that's using that spectrum you need to tell them okay we because because if they find you are using it without letting them know that you might create some problems but you can go to the company let make a deal with them let's let's say tell them I, you, sometimes you are not using the spectrum what if you rent the spectrum to me and i give you monthly payment for it of course as a company they they they, they want to make money i am not using the spectrum either way so if someone comes and tell me i want to rent it okay rent it and pay me monthly uh, monthly uh, sal salary or um, amount of money that i agree with you so that you can use the spectrum so your spectrum becomes like home extra home or like extra car you can rent it to people when you are not using it this is the cognitive radio concept that in in simple terms i mean where uh, th this is an answer to the fact this is an answer to the problem how can i use licensed frequencies to send and transmit over them so this is one solution i gave you three solution either you use unlicensed or you reduce the power in such a way you don't interfere with others and you limit your uh, transmission within a room or a building or you use the cognitive radio concept where you basically uh, make a license, make an agreement with a company that owns the spectrum and tell them uh, could you please rent me your spectrum when you are not using it i give you this money you give me the spectrum for this time i am allowed to enter it if it's not utilized and they make an agreement and you start serving your customers so lte application framework implements a subset of the 3gbb so this this lte application framework you can get it from lab view you can get it from the web, some websites if once you can buy it actually it's not expensive you can get it and it's basically lte release 10 physical layer this once you have it your fpga your uh, uh, usrb will have the functionality of a base station installed commercially with companies and then you can the beauty the beautiful thing you can play and manipulate and change the way you like to improve the performance you might come up with a technique for example the current lte application framework might serve only 10 user you might come up with come up with an algorithm that can improve the spectral efficiency and you can serve instead of 10 hundred users so you can make more money with less resources and this is where you can compete and make a difference there is interop interoperability between LTE application framework and receiver. It's not possible to connect to commercial base station or mobile phone. See, they limit you for this. But why? Because this is this is commercial software, commercial company. In open source tools and like GNU Radio, you can you can do this. But let's now for now just limit our our talk to this case. There are many resources, many important information. If you are interested, you can just try to, if you are interested in this domain, there is plenty of plenty of opportunities for people who want to really compete with big companies and create their own networks or create cellular network. You don't need uh, big companies to come and install networks for you. You really don't need this. In you, the, I am predicting in five to 10 years from now, people will be able to build cellular networks the, the way you can build a computer network right now. It's not gonna be a monopoly anymore. It's everything is going to be open source.
it's not going to be like like the inter the IT industry. They were always not letting people how. At the end of the day, IT industry is open source. It's all available around you everywhere. So it's going to happen the same for the communication, although it's not happening up until now, but it's going to happen eventually in the future. So a prototyping scenario, how do you prototype your e B and user equipment? When, for example, you have two options. The first option to use two different separate USRBs with two different PC, US, uh, PCs or uh, laptops, and the laptop run the software in e B, the software responsible for the implement the three GBB implementation of the e B, and the other computer the three GBB specification for the user equipment, and you save them in file, you run them in the computer, and you connect it with the USRB to transmit your signal live. And the USR equipment receive the device, the signal, decode it, encode it, and then uh, get the data out of it, and he can then communicate it back to the E node B. And this we call it downlink and doublink scenario. You have uh, the, you you have here two antennas, one antenna you can use it for the downlink and the other for the uplink. And this is how you implement a prototype. The second way is to use one USRB if you don't have too much money. And you cannot afford the cost of two USRBs. You can use only one USRB to use it as a transmitter and receiver. So what do you do? You have two antennas here. You have four antennas basically at the USRB. Each, each USRB has four antennas. These are the antennas. Here you have one antenna here. One, two, three, four. Two antennas can be used for the reception and two antennas for the transmission usually. And you have one computer. You can you can change you can adjust your program in such a way. You have two windows: one for transmission, one for reception. And you 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 get this the transmit antenna here. You have two receive antenna. At this side, you get RX and uh, RX and TX. And this side, you get RX and TX. But now, yeah, to 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 make a wireless multipath environment. Uh, the price of USRB devices, we said it's like ten thousand, uh, one thousand dollar, or eight hundred uh, dollar, or sometimes less. Uh, even there are things that you can buy for uh, three hundred, but the good ones are expensive. The, the for example, there are USRBs that you can really use them as base stations. The cost of them around twenty seven thousand dollar. I th this um, Rio they call it. I I can share you. I can share with you the links and these things. But also you need to get support and some softwares and these things. But now let's 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 focus on this example. This is very nice example where with one USRB you can build, you can test your transmission and reception as whole well with one USRB. So here. Uh, you, 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 you to, now, if you put the antennas close to each other, you will not get multipath environment. You will not get really fading environment. To, to, to mimic the system uh, and increase the distance between the transmit and receive antennas, what do you do? You put a cable here and you put it like 100 meters away from this, the base state, the USRB. This cable takes the here, transmitter and receiver antennas. You put the transmitter and receiver antenna here, and another two cables for transmitter and receiver antenna in the other side. So now the communication between them is this environment, not this tiny environment here. And now you have a real multipath fading channel and real realistic scenario because the transmitter and receiver usually they are far from each other, not very close to each other. And this is the way you implement it. It's pretty awesome. So now, this is the block diagram of a video streaming with option one. Let's say we want to uh, build a system to stream our videos uh, using an LTE network that we built. Uh, you remember, everybody remembers this journalist when they go to, when there is a live event. Let's say uh, an important person 
in the country, a minister or president or this want to talk life. So the the way they do it, the the uh, there is the satellite system, satellite company. Uh, they come to the event with their products and mic and uh, dish and all these things, and they establish a link with the satellite. And this satellite starts like we start recording from the speaker and immediately encode and and modulate and transmit this via the dish they have and the components they have and the transmitter to the uh, satellite on the air, on the sky. And the satellite starts broadcasting this information to all the dishes, to all the TVs in the world or certain region. Here you can build the same system but for LTE, for like you don't need satellite, you don't need to have dedicated component and very expensive stuff. You just come, record, get the data, encode it, use the USRP, and then and then send to the uh, to the to the other USRP device where you want your video to be broadcasted. So think of that, think of that like this is at the point where you uh, meet with the person you want to record his speech and think of that as like the satellite or the distribution point where you want the reception to happen and then distribute to the others. Now you can link it with uh, normal internet networks. No Wi-Fi, uh, cables, whatever. But the way you do it, you have your data source, UDP sync. UDP is used for real-time communication. It's not like TCB. You need to establish a connection like computer networks. And then you have the rate adaptation, inode P main, VI, the, the host here. And then you have the FPGA, inode B transmit and receive, and the antennas, and you transmit them to the other FPGA. And you have the, the, the second host, which acts like a receiver, and it can send feedback, measure the SNR, and then to the data sync using UDP. So this is an example of how you can implement things practically. And it's pretty awesome example. And this is for the case how to implement it when you have only one USRB data source, and UDP, you have the downlink, the uplink. The uplink is via loop, and you can separate the antennas. But this this example is not for a practical implementation. This is for testing purposes, for a prototyping. So, and we usually the control channel drives data channel. We all know that in communication system we have control channel and we have data channel. The control channels they give information about the data rate, the, the coding rate, the modulation order, the spreading codes, the synchronization sequence, the training symbols, the pilots, the, all the information you need in order to recover your data. So this information, you, 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 you usually, they, they are very important and you encode it with very robust encoder. And the, you, the, the encoder should not add complexity, should not cause delay, should not cause uh, power wastage. And in 5G, the control channels are being encoded with polar codes, but the data channel with LDBC code, normal codes, because they are very important, the control channels. So you have your messages, DCI messages. DCI is a term in 3GBB standardization for control, for control message. We call it control information. Control channel encoding, you encode it and you give this information to the data so that the data knows what to do. And the processing on the data, you know, the, proce the block what to process on the data and you have your OFDM modulator. We call it the modem. And then you send to the receiver. We Here you have TX, here you have RX, you have then you off the MD modulator, you always have also control channel information that you drive, you feed to the, the blocks in the receiver side to process the data according to the information you have. If you don't have this control information, if you don't have this control information, you will not be able to decode your, your data successfully. Because if you don't know, if the receiver does not tell you which modulation was used, or which coding grade, or which... Uh, 
sequ pilots, which training sequence is being used. How would you know? By guessing, it's not effective, it's not gonna work. That's why control information are very important until you get your data back. So this is this is how you implement it exactly with when you have lab view. You have your laptop that works as a pay station. Uh, and you have the software here that you install it in a Windows LabView software, LabView from LabView you design it and and then you have the USRB device and this is how you connect them with cables for testing purposes if you want you can connect them with cable without antennas and this is the Enode B this is the hardware of Enode B physical FBGA on USRB Rio and uh, you have cables SMA, SMA cables attenuators splitters antennas here in this connection and the receiver the same uses a PC laptop and uh, you have uh, you have also the software lab view and you have the USRB device that acts like FPGA uh, that performs the FPGA functionality and uh, uh, the application of the application LTE framework will be in inside the software basically. You need first to power the USRB Rio and then power the laptop. So first you operate the USRB, power the USRB and then the laptop to make sure you don't cause any problems. And this is the setup. Uh, the, for option two, for option two, where you have only one USRB and the computer works like a base station and user equipment at the same time. This is to save you money, to test your algorithm and save you money. And this is basically how you can implement wireless communication systems. Now, for for you, if you want to get more information and more details about that, uh, I will I will try to write. Uh, a blog or a document about the, the the resources where you need to get started what which links you need to read where do you need to talk to to get into this field now now up until now now we learned the theory the practice how to implement things but we we usually as researchers and people who are interested in producing new things we are always very keen to produce new algorithms, new, new techniques, new ideas. So we, we usually work here and our work is concentrated on this plot diagram. We try our best to, to come up with a new algorithm, new ideas, simulate it, test it with math and this. And if it works in simulation, it, it means that most probably it's going to work in practice. So, but for when you move to industry, you need, you need to prove that it can work in practice. That's why you need to prototype it. And you can prototype it with USRB devices, software defined radio and so on and so forth. So now this we, for this lecture, we can stop here. And next lecture is going to be very important lecture related to this this field here we are when we are here how what, how to simulate things or get them running and working in a seamless manner how what, what are the key functions in the OFDM modulator how to see the sink how to see the sinusoidal how to manipulate them how to filter them how to window them how to integrate it with MIMO, how to equalize it in, in, in coding, in coding so that you can use these codes in lab review or MATLAB and control your practical real-time implementation and uh, improve your system. So for today, we can stop here and we hopefully continue discussing and talking about uh, other important subjects in the next coming lecture. Thank you very much and 